Hey guys, GWS here, doing for once a non-political video. Thank goodness, because quite frankly I'm tired of politics. Um, but anyhow, I want to get into machine learning in video games, particularly um, Super Mario World, but this can also be applied to almost any game, really. It's a general purpose application of AI. So let me just first explain my inspiration to getting interested in this. There's something called Mario by Seth Bling. Mar-I slash O, if you want to look it up on YouTube. Um, and it's basically, he applies a neural network to Super Mario World in order to get through specific levels. And he's got other machine learning based things on there. His channel is very interesting and I encourage everybody to check it out. Um, but anyhow, like Mario is a really good program, but it's not a general purpose um, program. It basically detects how far you are in the level, applies a fitness function to the neural network, which um, let me just explain a couple things briefly. A neural network is basically a system, an AI system that reinforces itself based on the human brain, where the human brain has neurons and the neurons act, the neurons are strengthened and weakened, the synapses between them based on a reinforcement, like, is this, did this produce positive or negative results? And that's what the fitness function does. The fitness function defines what those positive and negative results are, such as, you know, how far into a level you got, at least how far moving right you get. So... It's a, you know, but see, there's a problem with this, and that is that, um, like, Mario, one of its biggest drawbacks is it works off of individual neurons, and it works based off of the assumption that moving right equals best. And we're going to look at some examples here of where that succeeds and where it fails. So here, moving right is perfect, because this is a very simple level right here. Like, all you do in this level is you move right, jump over stuff, avoid the enemies, and you get to the end of the level. It's a very simple level. You go through here. You don't have to jump on that if you don't want. Very simple. You just avoid the pit, jump over the pipes. Um, and then you avoid the chuck and you finish the level. Very simple level, right? See, this is something Mario can do because moving right means higher fitness. Okay, now, now take that in this context, okay? Now, the way these things work, um, any kind of genetic algorithm, um, a neural network, whatever, it works off of you have a species, right? Um, and there's a certain number of species in a generation, and each um, generation will take aspects of the best gen species from the previous generation, um, say, like, whoever moves right the best, whichever, um, AI moves right, and it will advance that to the next, and it will use that to create a new population, basically. Um, and so, within that context, you may spend, say, ten generations on this level, ten generations of AIs regenerating themselves to move right, then you get to this level. And see, the, what the AI is going to do, and I played this before because this is like take five of this video, um, but um, we can still do this. Um, it's going to try to move right here. First of all, it's going to encounter this wall. Okay, how do I move right here? I just spent ten generations learning all I gotta do is move right and jump over pits, and now all of a sudden I gotta move back, or I at least have to jump back on here, then jump back to the right. So say, you could spend ten generations saying, okay, well, I jump back, but then if it keeps moving over here, you know, it's gonna eventually die, either hit an, an enemy or do this. So it's like, you know, okay, we got a game over, which is good. 
Maybe I can get back to the beginning of that level. Okay. So anyhow, well, th well, this is a perfect transition anyhow to get back into the the point of this. So, okay. So Mario's limitation is it just says go right, even when the answer isn't going right. And there's a lot more complicated levels in Super Mario World, such as caves, such as um, having to um, jump on enemies, having to run up walls, where that's not always going to cut it. You can't just always move right. So, and I think this is where, like, a lot of these machine, you know, not just Mario, but any machine learning thing, will get stuff wrong. Because, like, think about what a human does. Okay? Like, what did I just do there? So I run over here, I pick up the shell, and then I throw it at the enemies. So, okay, now, now think about that. Now, are we just analyzing our input on every frame? No, what we're doing is we're saying, run to the right until we pick up the shell. When we pick up the shell, we jump, and then we release the shell, which will hit all the enemies. So that's, so to a human, this is three steps. Like, the instant you see this cliff right here, you're thinking, you know, what's up here? You see enemies up here, and you see enemies to throw the shell into, and then you throw the shell. So, you're only reacting a few times. And this is where I think we can do a better job of making... Um, programs think more similarly to humans, and that's what I want to do here, is the system I'm going to be working on over the next who knows how long is a macro-based supervised learning approach. And, and so, so here's what it is. It's like, what'll happen... Basically, let me explain what a macro is first, just before I get in trouble. A macro is just a set of inputs given a specific rule in RAM. So, so what the AI will do is the AI will go through a bunch of rules that it has set up until it finds a rule that... Um, where the RAM is set within its range. Like, say, um, say, let's just use a simple example. Say the RAM address, um, RAM address 100 is set to 253, and there's a rule for that. Then you, you have a macro that says, run for, like, hold forward five seconds, um, hold B for three seconds, and then jump. That can be, that's one macro. And see, rather than having to do, execute every frame, the macro itself is staying loaded until all the inputs have finished their um, rule. And, you know, like, there's other macros too, like, you know, you got this, you got, you know, you're never gonna run right and jump on Yoshi. So, you know, maybe there's a macro where if, if the computer sees a Yoshi, it jumps toward it. Like if it, you know, like if the X value of the Yoshi is less than, you know, the computer could jump on it, you know, because that's how a human's going to think of it. You know, if you're on this side of Yoshi, you know, you're clearly going to jump on him from this side. You're not going to jump over here and try to jump on Yoshi. And you can reinforce a computer to do that, but in order to do that, you got to have not just a bunch of random inputs that happens to have you land on the Yoshi, but you got to have a sequence of inputs um, that results in that. And the way you do that is through supervised learning. So supervised learning is basically, you watch the computer play. The computer will have a specific macro loaded. And then you tell the computer, while the macro's running, whether what it's doing is good or bad. You positively or negatively reinforce what's inside of that function. 
if you negatively reinforce it, then what'll happen is it'll go through and it'll change something in that macro. It could edit the RAM address that the rule's based on. It could edit the, um, you know, or it can edit any of its inputs or the amount of time that it's holding the inputs, right? And so, like, slowly over time, you can have, um, or, um, it can even choose to delete the macro entirely. And maybe I can also make that human supervised. Like, you just say, delete the macro, create a new one from scratch. You know, you can have that, too. Um, which, I don't know, this is just very introductory. This is even... This isn't even an algorithm stage yet, this is more concept stage, because I haven't seen anybody um, implement this type of thing yet. Like, most of what I see are, like, neural networks um, based on some type of basic feature in RAM. Like, the way Mario does it is, um, it looks at objects on the screen basically collidable objects, like anything with a hitbox, um, I'm pretty sure is on there, like, well, most things, I don't think, I don't know if it has, like, um, like, platforms you can jump on, like, that have no bottom collision detection, basically, no bottom left or right, it's just top collision, but, Anyhow, the point is, like, most of the neural networks that exist now are based on some feature of RAM with some arbitrary fitness function, like, um, how far to the right you get in a level. And, um, it's not, it's, it's good, it's probably even going to be better than anything I could create, especially, you know, I'm no professional programmer, I'm amateur at best, <laughs> but, you know, basically this, is, I think, is, if you want a general purpose AI for, for games, then I think this is how you gotta go about it. You gotta have it think like a human, not just have the neural structure of a human, but think in steps, because that's how humans think. They think of in steps. It's a series of steps to achieve an outcome and you know there's lots of little things you can add to I'm not gonna go into you know like a brainstorming on different algorithmic branches that I could go down and all that but it's just a very general idea and I would even like it if somebody else could at least implement some kind of macro based system or in the very least um, apply it to um, a standard neural network um, where, you know, even if you pre-program these steps, like, you know, you can actually program, like, run to the right five seconds, then jump, or something like that. And see, there's one other feature I want to get into before I end this video. And it's called interrupts, and I can show that here before the time runs out. Okay, so, let's just say the macro is run to the right and jump. Now that comes with the problem of, okay, if you run to the right, you're going to hit an enemy, and that's not good. So an interrupt is a feature of memory where you jump outside of the macro. And, and those are always active, so say, okay, you got... Your macro is run to the right and jump. And then you say, like, okay, so let's say this mole here. Um, so if your macro is run to the right and jump, and the enemy, like, is gonna hit you, like, if you're within, say, for example, a certain distance of the enemy, you know, the interrupt will take you out of the macro, and it will immediately execute the interrupt commands. I'll finish this level before I get time out. Good stuff. Um, but, yeah, anyhow, 
yeah, that's how interrupts would work. Like, because one of the problems with the macros is, of course, like, while you're executing the macro, like, the AI will be blind to enemies and obstacles in its way, because it's just a set of inputs. And when you're not flexible about your inputs, um, then you just run into, like, everything in your way, or, you know, especially, like, moving platforms, for example. Like, a macro-based system would have a lot of trouble dealing with that. And, as I said, like, it's... Like, to get it to be as refined as a human would be really, really difficult. But, I think that a competent system of general-purpose AI can get something like this to be as good as maybe a six or seven year old child. Um, but yeah, this is what I'm going to be working on for a while. Um, hopefully I can make some progress, but it's also possible I run into a dead end because of my limited um, experience with these kinds of networks and all that. Um, I've done elementary learning machine learning, but um, this would be the biggest I've done, so if I can produce progress, I will definitely start uploading stuff. Anyhow, thanks for listening, guys, and God bless.